everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm working with different face shapes and stuff like that, and I was so excited because so many of you have requested that. It's probably one of the most requesting things. So I'm really excited, Christy wanted to talk about it, and I'm really excited to show you guys. So we started with Christine's eyes, and we're just gonna, cause we're just doing face today. I'm just gonna show you all of my tricks. So we, um, and we filmed her before video, so before brows and before eyes, we can go ahead and flash that for you guys in a second, and then we will at the end. But tip number one is you really want to layer creams and powder products. So one mistake I see people doing when they contour is they'll just go in really heavy with the powders, and it's it's pretty noticeable in real life. So what I'm gonna show you today, the contouring tricks and tips are gonna be great when you have an event or you're getting photographed or even just every day when you wanna feel done up. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna open my full bag of tricks and show you guys all my tips. So I like to start with a fairly, like a medium to full coverage foundation. So this is NARS, I'll show you guys the bottle. This is NARS foundation, I love this. You see me using it a lot, I'll link it below. So we're gonna do this on Christine, and because we're going down um, on her neck, I'm gonna do some foundation down here as well, just so that the texture is the same. And Christine, you have really good skin. It's very even. That smells good too. Yeah, it could be my brush cleaner that smells, <laughs> but yeah, the foundation smells good too. So I'm just buffing it in. I'm actually doing a really light layer because like I said, we're gonna, um, we're gonna layer. So first we're gonna do creams, and then we're gonna go in and set everything with powder. So I'm just getting a really nice, um, just a nice even base of this. Okay, go ahead and turn towards me. And I'm matching her neck. She has a little bit of redness in her face, which everybody does, um, but her neck is more, you're almost more of like a yellow tone, I would say. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would say your undertone yeah. is? Yeah. Christine has like, the best makeup kit you have ever seen. <laughs> she brought it for me to, to see because I've done her makeup before and she was telling me about all the MAC stuff she has and she brought it and it's beautiful. It's like sparkling clean. I told her I've never seen anybody bring me their makeup kit so clean and she has all these amazing products. So we used her shadows on her eyes today. She had like the best plum colors. I should list those too. Okay, so we have, this is a pretty good, a pretty good base. I'm leaving under her eyes bare. I'm just going down the neck. I just want everything to just be even, but very thin layer, like I said. So this is your step one. So now we're actually gonna highlight first before we go into our contouring. And I do think it's important to do a little bit of highlighting if you do a contour. You want things to be dimensional all over. So we are gonna go in um, with some Tarte Shape Tape. This is a very full coverage concealer. So we're gonna go in with that today under her eyes. This is the shade Light Neutral. This might be too dark for her, so I'm also going to use the shade Light Sand. So why I mix this, I'm going to tell you guys my second biggest tip, and that is if you want to really do some detail work and contour a specific area you also want to contour everything else if she if we just did like a light shading on her neck or just a light shading of powder or something like that you could just do that one area but if you really are gonna do some correcting and changing things if you only do one area it's it's gonna look weird right like it won't blend yeah. so like nose for example if you contour your nose but you contour nothing else you leave your cheekbones everything else is flat it looks very weird and very apparent but mm -hmm. even though we're going to be layering a lot of products on Christine today um, it's still she's still gonna look great in real life and it's gonna look much more believable than if we um, only did one area so that's my tip two is contour everything so even though this is, you know, we're focusing on the jawline for this video, I am going to show you how to contour the whole face so that you get a beautiful, believable, glam finish. I so don't if you have a lot of puffiness under your eyes. Under your eyes? You just want to be really gentle with it. I should have put some eye pads on you before. We should have really given you the royal <laughs> treatment. So puffiness, there's a lot of um, like eye patches that work really great. There's ones I like to use, they're by Skin Iceland, and it's like a cooling patch. Um, sometimes, 
products with caffeine in them help minimize puffiness. MAC has like a good under eye cream I used to use. Have you ever used that one? Mm -hmm. It has caffeine in it. But usually anything cooling reduces it a little bit. Is it something you would do like the night before or? The day, like right before. Okay. So if you, like today's your birthday, you're glam, <laughs> and you're getting ready, you could pop on the like cooling gels okay. while you do your eye makeup and then okay. take them off and do your foundation immediately after. But they're fun. Are you into skincare too? Like I know you're into makeup. <laughs> do you like to like do masks and stuff like um, that? Yeah, but I don't do it a lot because I don't want to dry out my skin. Oh, okay. And I make sure I use a good cleanser. What cleanser never, do you like? I never use soap on my face. A ever. good girl. That's why you have good skin. <laughs> Can we share your age? I mean, Can we tell yeah, them that's fine. how old are you, Christine? 55. Does she not Double look amazing? Digit. Does she not look amazing? <laughs> you look so good, Christine. No, I think I use Cetaphil is what it is. Cetaphil cleanser? Facial yeah. Cleanser? yeah. That one's like a dermatologist gentle, recommended. Yeah. yeah. And then I use a little bit like oil of Olay kind of moisturizer thing. My mom uses that too, and she <laughs> also it. looks amazing. Like, the, is it the one in the little jar? The oil? No, lily? it's like in a bottle. But okay. Yeah, nothing fancy. But the same brand. Okay, now that that is on, so look up for me. I just did a really light layer under her eyes, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll set that after. So we are doing this in real time for you guys. We're live, actually. If you're live in the chat, you can say hello. Because I want you guys to really see every step. And that way you can replicate it very easily. So we're going to use... Christine had this, actually, in her makeup kit. So we're going to use some more of her makeup. So this is NYX. This is called the Wonder Stick. And these, these are amazing. I really love these. So they're dual-sided. And one side is your highlighting stick. And then the other side is your contour stick. So this is probably, okay, this is the shade light medium. So we're going to use this on Christine today. So what I love about this is you can directly contour on the face um, from the applicator. You don't need to, like I use a, um, a contour palette a lot and I'll have to scrape it off and add it on with a brush. But this you can just directly apply to their face. So like I said earlier, we're going to contour her entire face. So we're going to do the forehead. And I just like to bring it in a little bit. And I focus more on the sides than the top. And then we're, I'm going to turn you so they can see. And then we're going to start right in the hairline. And we're just going to give her a really great, beautiful cheekbone. Swipe it up. And we'll do this side. Perfect. And I like to, um, I like to do a little flip. Like I like to give a nice jawline with like a little bit of lift with a little mm -hmm. curve right at the end and go ahead and look forward. And I usually stop right at the edge of the eye. On some people, I start kind of in the middle, stop at the middle of the pupil. Mm -hmm. But you really want to be careful to not add a lot of heaviness and contouring here. So a good rule of thumb is to stop at the edge of the eye. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and right under her jawline, we're going to draw a really soft line. Just a little bit. And you don't want to go too heavy with your contour, and you do want to bring it down the neck. So I can feel how light a touch you're using, too. Yeah. Yes. You don't have to do very heavy. Yeah, you do. On the jawline, I don't like a lot. And you usually I'll do kind of right under the jawline. I'm bringing yours up slightly. And then I just like to do little lines underneath just to bring it down. So you generally, if you, if you do cream contouring on the neck and you're doing... Um, corrective work you do want to go down with it if you're just doing a light little contour I just will do the jawline but this is super super creamy like you could see me putting it on Christine you could probably feel it it's oh, very yeah. comfortable yeah. going yeah. on you can hardly feel it yeah I love these I am so glad you had one I was um and then I'm going to take my same brush this is the one I did her foundation with mm -hmm. this is actually an elf brush and I think it's like three or four dollars I will link this for you too it's just a really compact kabuki brush mm -hmm. so I really like it and this is drugstore too the NYX the yeah, wonder sticks yeah. I mean kind of, I don't know it's it wasn't like very in the expensive of, at all yeah is <laughs> no. are these like seven I think I got it at Nordstrom Rack actually they oh, have a lot of stuff there too where to go yeah that's awesome yeah I love the yeah. I'll link the wonder sticks too yeah Christine has all the goods it's in her makeup kit. It's probably a fantastic product. 
Then you have to blend it, of course. Yes, then you blend it, and this is pretty light. So sometimes after I blend it, if I feel like it's buffing away, I'm gonna add a little bit more. You just don't ever want to go on um, too dark. You can't, it's really hard to take away, but it's easy to add. So after I blended that, I felt like I didn't have as much yeah. color payoff as I wanted, and so I'm gonna go in that makes and sense. add a little more, yeah. Have you used this before? I didn't. Once. Once, okay. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. It wasn't that bad. I, I didn't know how good or bad I did, but um, it was easy to use. Good. Yeah, yes. like you said, it's very blendable, very creamy. So It's creamy. light. You don't feel like you have a lot of gunk on your face. Which is huge, I think, with cream yeah. contouring like this because yeah. it's so easy to feel like you have so much product on your face. Okay, so line, you want to be careful. I want to keep the top of it sharp. So I'm just blending um, under it, and I'm going down on the top. I really don't want to create a, like too blended of a shadow on top if that makes sense. So I'm actually just blending the underneath and then I'll show you how I blend the top. So I'm just going down and this is a good coverage. This is a trick to getting a really defined jawline that requires no makeup and it takes two seconds and you get an instant defined jawline. It's a good tip so stay, <laughs> stay tuned. Okay. So I am loving the way that looks. I think I'm going to blend a little bit more on her chin. I'm going to add a little bit more product. And then I'll show you how I blend the top of it. And honestly, in, in person, this actually looks pretty natural, especially when I start to layer it. As long as you do the neck correctly. I think it's really important that we apply the foundation first on her neck and a little bit on her chest because... Um, the cream just slides really nice over that. If I was to only put foundation on her face and then do the cream stick on her neck, it it just wouldn't look yeah. the same. Yeah, and it wouldn't feel the same. You want it seamless. Yes. <laughs> Christine knows. Blend right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I kind of I like to yeah. do over here. I'm a too. big blender. I like to blend, blend, blend. <laughs> That's good. I know you know all the goods. Your makeup always looks really good. I love these like mo like purpley plum tones on Christine. Mm -hmm. That's what she had in her kit. I'll hold up some of your makeup. <laughs> like these are some of the shadows we did on her. These are both Mac. This is Sketch and how do you say that one? Hope. Okay, <laughs> I just didn't want to be wrong. H A U X. Yes, <laughs> I used to call yeah. it yeah. Hox. No, that's what but they then told I heard me. someone call it Ho. Yeah, yeah, but I'm like I don't want to say yeah. Ho on my channel. Yeah. That's, that's how you said it. Yeah, H A U X. Okay, yes, it is gorgeous color. That maybe was like it's French. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. That's really funny. I'm glad you knew. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so now that that's on, I love the way this looks. the The color is really flattering. It's mm -hmm. it's has enough of a cool undertone in there sometimes people will go to use condors and they'll use like an orange and that's very apparent this is really good balance she looks great i'm going to set it with powders and i'm going to show you guys how to add a little bit more detail work but that's looking good christine you don't look like you have a fake tan either right like would an orange kind of do that yeah oh like mine look at my hands <laughs> I fake tanned last night and I'm usually pretty good at it, but I fell asleep kind of on my arm oh. and it like, you know, <laughs> you do what you can do. Okay, so this is RCMA Clear Translucent Powder, so the, or no color powder. So we're going to go in, we'll use your brush, Christine. So we're just going to go in with the no color powder and really lightly set things. just to mattify it slightly and just a really, really, really light layer. Cause I'm gonna go in with powder, powder contours, and you're gonna make it a lot easier on yourself if you set it first. If you go on top of creams with powder, or, yeah, it can be a little bit splotchy if you don't set it correctly. And then let's do the under eye too. So I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush for her under eye. Actually, your under eyes look pretty good. Let's will you, you be doing blush too or just yes. the contouring? Yes, okay. we will be doing some blush. Do you like blush? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love blush. I think I'll do like a, um, like a rose toned. What color lipsticks do you usually wear? Pinkies. 
Yeah, a pink is good <laughs> pink on you. Pink or plum. Yeah. Pink is your color, Christine. Yeah. Okay, so this is Hula Bronzer. This is just, they have a light if you're very fair, which you're not very fair, but you are more mm-hmm. on the fair side. The light would be pretty on Christine. We're just going to use the regular one today. I like to buy the jumbo size because um, I feel like, I mean, you obviously get more product. But the little tiny one, I just hit pan so quickly. So now I'm using an angled brush. This one's Sigma. This is the Large Angle Contour F40. I like any angled brush for this. And I'm going to go ahead and start in the forehead. And I like to do the sides first before I do the middle. Sometimes when I see people do it, they'll just get kind of like a big blob in the middle of their forehead. So I like to start on the sides. And if you guys have any questions, those of you that are joining us live, feel free to drop them in the chat and we will make sure to get to those. So the reason I'm doing her forehead is just like I said before, the tip I gave you guys earlier, you do want to contour the whole face and we're just creating more of a 3D illusion. So you will notice if you go back and watch this video or any makeup video, when I first just did her foundation, everything looks very flat. Um, which is good because then you can then choose where your shadows are. So anything that is a shadow is gonna recede, it's gonna look smaller, it's gonna look further back. Anything that is lighter is gonna look more prominent and more forward. That's why we like to highlight cheekbones because we like to give a nice lifted cheekbone and that's why we contour under the cheeks and the jawline and the forehead, we're, we're receding it. So we're just basically, you can kind of create a new face <laughs> essentially, which is fun. And this is really fun for photos. Anything, anything, or any time anything is 2D, when it's not in person, you can go a little bit heavier. So if you were going to go do a photo shoot or something like that, mm-hmm. you could do a little bit more contouring than normal, and it will end up looking good in photos. But in person, we got to be careful. But still natural. Yes, it's still natural. <laughs> So we're just doing really light shading. With this powder, I don't want to go too heavy down on her neck because I do want it to look nice in person. And sometimes I'll bring it a little bit on the chest too, um, just so it doesn't have a cut off. Okay, so that is very beautiful. So trick with cheekbones. Let me turn you to the side. I like my cheekbone contour to be probably a little bit higher than most people would do. I think it's um, it's common for people to, they'll do like the fish face, <laughs> the cute fish face. Yes, beautiful fish face. <laughs> but when you do that and you go ahead and feel the hollows of your cheeks, um, sometimes people will put the contour right in there and it actually, like when you stop making the fish face, yeah. it pulls downwards and you'll kind of get like a lower cheek uh-huh. and we like nice lifted, mm-hmm. nice lifted cheekbones. You're putting that kind of where I would put blush. Yeah, yeah. So Actually, a little of, bit. Okay. Yeah, so kind of. I mean, you don't want it to be too high. But, but it's kind of slightly under, I guess? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so slightly, like right on your, your, you know, indents, yeah. but a little bit higher. That makes <laughs> I have sense. a bad face. <laughs> no, no, no. It's very round. No, not in indents like your, um, the hollows of your cheeks. Oh, okay. Like everybody wow. has those, is what I'm trying to say. I'm at loss for the current, <laughs> correct anatomy <laughs> turn. Your cheekbones. Okay, let me, let me check on the live chat really quick, and then we're going to get in. I'm going to show you another jawline tip. Oh, hello. I see a difference. We got lots. Of, yeah, you can kind of see our lens is like a little bit reflective. It's like, so she's cheating. Yeah, she's seeing yeah. the final look before we're done. Eileen says you look beautiful and happy birthday. Thank you. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Brenna. Oh, everyone's saying happy birthday. Michelle has, says you look gorgeous, darling. Good morning, Cindy. Okay, Pamela. Okay, how to pick a bronzer. I am fair, and sometimes a bronzer is too dark, too yellow. Oh, and someone says they love your smile, Christine. Thank you. I know, Christine, <laughs> you're just the best. Thank you for modeling for me today. I will tell you how to pick a bronzer um, for you who asked, but first I'm going to show you another cheek tip. So I'm going to use that same no color setting powder, and I am going to go with my little cosmetic wedge. First, I'm going to dump, whoa, dump some in the lid. Okay, this is my little cosmetic wedge. You can use a beauty blender or whatever. I like these because they're disposable. Mm. And we're just going to dip it in the powder, and we are going to carve out her cheekbones. So I'm going to have her turn this way. So we're going to go under that contour that we just did, and we're just going to go all the way down to meet her mouth. 
But that's translucent, so how does that work? Yeah, so what it does, <laughs> people call this baking. So the translucent powder is just going to set the foundation underneath. But if you use a lot like that, it'll slightly lighten it. Mm. Yeah, even though it's no, no okay. color and okay. translucent. Okay. Have you done this before? No. <laughs> this is a good no. tip. Okay, so you just want to make sure it's the same on both sides. It's actually easier with the beauty blender. Sometimes the, the little wedge like this is so sharp. Mm. All right. And you'll notice like when we turn to this side, it's already kind of fading away, like it soaks in and then we're gonna wipe it away in a little bit. But that gives a really pretty jawline. Put a little bit on your pretty shirt. Can okay, you slightly? No matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the best way to pick um, bronzer colors for fair skin. So fair skin is probably the hardest to pick a really good contour color for because when we're fair, it's just really going to show the undertones of anything we're using. I actually do love the Hoola bronzer. It works. Even though it's a bronzer and it has warmth, this is a good one. But if you're very fair, I would get the light. So it's still the Hoola bronzer by benefit, but get the light. The light is um, less warm than this. I'll hold it by Christine's face <laughs> so you can see. So this is just a good neutral. Like it definitely has some warm undertones. That's why it's called a bronzer. But the light is even more more neutral like I almost even want to say it, it's like this but lighter with like a little bit of gray in it because if you think about it for your contour color you're just replicating a shadow so ideally it would would be a cool tone it would be like a gray or something like that but that just doesn't translate well in person that's why people tend to use warmer ones um, I actually I have for myself when I am fair I have used the NYX Wonder Stick so this one is light medium and I think they have one called light fair and it's a really great color um, the contour stick is similar to the Hula light it's like not fully a cool tone but definitely like it has minimal warmth so that's a really good color too those two that I've used so this yeah. is the light medium the other one just this seemed one. too light to me that's why i went with this one yes like, no for you this is perfect. it was like too fair yeah you chose correct christine so i have a question about bronzers yeah then. so what happens if you're like you know a big sun bunny in the summer and you get tanned in that don't you have to adjust the tones you use mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of people will have like a summer foundation and like a winter foundation because you don't want to wear anything too light light on dark skin and then look kind of like bleached out or yeah you know, kind yeah of odd <laughs> exactly sometimes like I bet you could get away with this bronzing color if you were um more fair or more tan mm -hmm. but yeah you're yeah. usually your concealers will have to change yeah. in your foundation yeah. you'd go like half shade darker oh this is another one that I pulled for Christine that I didn't use um this is Hoola Tantor this is another cream product and this is fair and it doesn't, it looks very warm right now on camera, but this one actually pulls like a good neutral. When I have swatched this, this would be good on fair skin if you still want that warmth, um, but you don't want it to look orange on you. So hopefully that helped <laughs> answer your question. It is tricky with fair skin and sometimes it's trial and error. Like unless you, you are my model, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to recommend the exact product, but I have used those on fair people and they tend to work well. Okay, let's, so if you guys saw what I did, go ahead and turn. So what I did is the translucent powder absorbed semi into her face, but it was still there. So I just lightly wiped it away with the brush. And sometimes I'll go up on the contour a little bit just to blend it. Like I don't want a line on her cheek, but I do want an illusion of like a, just a more sharp, beautiful jawline. And I like this on everybody. Like this is my favorite bridal thing to do is the cheeks mm -hmm. like that. Cause a bride, usually their hair is kind of out of the way. Mm -hmm. You're taking all these like kissing pictures yeah, there. Yeah. You see them from the side and I love a good yeah. cheekbone <laughs> on bride. <laughs> it's my favorite. Okay. So let's go ahead and do blush. So I'm going to show you guys where I like the blush. Um, let's put the camera on Christine really quick. I'm going to grab my blush. All right. So this is my brush palette. We're going to use Melba by MAC. I love this blush. So, Oops. <laughs> dropping my, that's okay, I don't need that anymore. I dropped my foundation. Okay, so we're gonna use Melba. So I like to do a lifting effect with my blush. So instead of putting it, go ahead and smile for me. So instead of doing it on her cute um, apples of her cheeks, now go ahead and stop smiling. You can see when she stops smiling, like the apple mm -hmm. moves down. It does on everybody. So I actually like to do blush when people are not smiling. And I like to do it on the apple then. 
and slightly higher than my contour. So if you get your contour in the correct place, when you apply your blush, you'll know exactly where to put it. And this is a really beautiful peachy pink, Melba. Mm -hmm. It's probably slightly warmer than the lip color we're gonna do on her, but it's very brightening and very beautiful. So I do really love a good blush when I do a contour, when I'm doing jaw lines or anything like that. I just love putting a little bit of a color in their face because I feel like when you do a good blush and some highlighting and contouring, instead of just looking at like the dark areas where you've applied a contour, there you're just looking at her beautiful face. You see her eyes pop, her cheeks are blushing, your your eyes are drawn to the center of their face versus like, oh, you contoured your neck mm -hmm. or, you know, it's not as noticeable. So that's why I like to pair it with blush. You have such a light touch with that too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You don't want to go too heavy with I was always taught to kind of start at the apples of your cheeks and then blend it upward toward your hairline. Yeah. And I noticed you don't really go that far. So I don't kinda... go, yeah, I don't go all the way up to your hairline, but it wasn't that, that motion kind of. Mm -hmm. And there's different ways to apply blush. This is my preference, what I do for most people, but it's not wrong the way you're saying. Okay, let's pop on a lip, a lip really quick. And then we'll take some more questions, so drop them now. And then I'll show you guys my no makeup instant slimming tip. It's a good one. Okay, so we're gonna do, and you've probably tried these colors. Have you done Velvet Teddy before? Mm -hmm. Let's yep. do Velvet Teddy, it's by MAC. I know you're a MAC girl. Okay. Velvet Teddy is really pretty. It has like a pink, pinky undertone, but it's still kind of a nude. I think that will look really nice with your eyeshadows. Then we're going to use one of my disposable little lip brushes. We'll see how we feel about them. Okay. Christine, what is your... When you get, like, glam, when you're like, okay, I'm doing my makeup, because you own a lot of makeup. So when you're like, all right, I'm getting ready, what is your, like, go-to look? Like, do you do full face everything? Mm -hmm. Or do you... Okay. Yeah. Do you like a smoky eye? Do you like more of like a bold lip? Um, I like more of a smoky eye. You have pretty, yeah. pretty eyes. I don't want to like have the focus be in two places. So it's either the eyes or a bold lip. See, you know, you know yeah. all the makeup secrets. Yeah. All the makeup recommendations. Okay, I'm just going to outline your lips. Well, I actually really like this brush. These are like disposable brushes. Mm -hmm. And usually disposable brushes are like an odd shape, but this one is good for detail. Okay, I'm going to check the questions right now while I work on her lips just because... A lot of times <laughs> I'll put a lip gloss or, you know, over to, or just use a lip pencil and draw it in. Oh, yeah. As lipstick. And then as a, like a base, and it kind of stays real well, and then just put a gloss over the top. Oh, that's a good idea. I like to do that, too. Oh, Pamela says, you're looking great already. <laughs> I know, she's beautiful. Christine says she loves your hair color. She does a great job for the eyes. They I look like the very eyes. pretty. I know. <laughs> She's cheating. She's looking in the lens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So another tip that I love for the jawline, like let's say you don't want to get this glam. Let's say it's not your birthday like Christine. Mm -hmm. You're just like, <laughs> it's a normal day. You just want to do like some light contouring yeah. on your chin. What I would say to do is um, you could skip the cream contour because that usually takes a little bit longer. And I would just take that same angled brush I'll show you and then I'll go back to her lips. This little guy mm -hmm. and I would put a little bit of bronzer in it and you're just going to kind of flick on the jawline like right mm -hmm. under it. Like just draw kind of a little line and you're going to flick mm -hmm. down and that is going to help you contour without leaving a line. Your goal is just to have it like sharp. Like you don't want it to be too blended or it will just mm -hmm. kind of look too diffused but you don't want any lines if that makes sense so like a sharp a jaw with no lines if that makes sense is the goal now you're not using the pencil no so i didn't use a pencil on you today this is just the lipstick um if i use a lip brush sometimes i can get a good enough lip shape i don't use the pencil but the pencil is really good for like long wear yeah like if you're if you're going out or something like that i like the pencil Yeah, 
after I finish the lips, I'll show you guys my instant slimming tip. And then um, I will, I'm going to take her hair out and then we'll show her <laughs> her beautiful after. She hasn't seen her makeup yet. So we didn't do, for, I'll kind of explain what I did on her eyes. So I just did similar to what I do in a lot of my tutorials. I tight lined her eyeliner because she just has the prettiest like almond eyes and they're kind of like this greenish color. So I really wanted to make them pop. So we did a nice um, defined liner on her today. And then um, I used a lot of those purple tones that I showed you guys to bring out the green in her eyes. Um, and then we did lashes. We did the 747s in short that I do a lot. And then I added some individuals on top, some little lash clusters. Actually, look down. Have you heard of the MAC lipstick called O? Just O? No. O. What color is it's it? It's my favorite. Is it pretty? It looks like this like golden plum. Uh-huh. But if you put it on, like it looks good on any skin tone. It's really weird. Really? Yeah. Oh, so I love MAC lipsticks. Yeah, I have to look at that. It's my favorite shade. I don't know if it's still available or not, but Do you have it in your kit? Yeah. Okay, you'll have to yeah. show me when we're done. Yeah. How pretty. No, I, I like love it. That. It's very deceiving because it looks kind of dark. In yeah. the tube, but when you put it on, it just kind of like, just looks really good. It just enhances you really well. Oh, I'm excited. You'll yeah. have to show yeah. me. Yeah, and it goes well with all the, all the, you your know, plums. Yeah. Okay. With the plum it's like tones. a pinky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you'll it's have really to pretty. Show me. I love MAC Love Sticks. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you guys the tip. So you'll have to do it with me. So I used to work for a beauty photographer for many years, and I would I would do the makeup and hair before the shoot, and then I would assist her. So I was there as she posed her models. And every single person, all, all women, we want like a ni nice job. So she would tell everyone to do this. She's like, okay, bring your chin forward and down slightly. So sit up really tall, Christine. Mm. <laughs> okay, perfect. And bring your chin forward. And then, yeah, it uh, feels weird. Looks yes. right. And then down a little. Yes, perfect. Okay. So even more, kind of stick it out, good, and bring it down. This feels weird. No, it feels so weird, but it looks so it good. Does. And she would have everyone do that, and they were always so skeptical because you feel so weird. Like you stick it out and down, yeah. and it feels weird, but it looks so good. So if you were getting your pictures taken, practice in front of a mirror. So she would have everyone kind of pose a little asymmetrically <laughs> and like stick their chin out and tall, down. Stick your chin yes. out and down. Yes. Slightly Slightly tall, down. chin out and down. <laughs> and it is like night and day. Like it just slimmed everyone's face. It gives everyone a jawline, and everybody would want that because she she just worked with women, and she's like, I know your insecurities, and that's one of everybody's. We all want a good jawline and she would have everyone do that in the whole photo shoot to remind them so practice chin forward and down guys in the mirror your next selfie or great group photo chin forward and down you will come back to this video and you can thank me and christine for teaching you are you ready to see birthday girl okay, okay let me grab the mirror i have it over here all right here you go Ooh, look at the eyes. I know, you're mm. beautiful eyes, Christine. <laughs> you're so cute. You're so cute. You look so good, yeah, but like look a, how natural the mm -hmm, contour is. Yeah. Like we went in, we did oh, the yeah. creams and we did the powders, but you yeah. you could go out and it, even in real life it's I not. It. It's like a lot of makeup, but it's natural looking. Yeah, yeah, you look I don't so feel good. like it has too much, but yeah, I like it. Perfect. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you for being my model. Mm. You were so great. Okay, so let's show you guys her before because we did start with the eyes. So we're going to flash the before <laughs> so you can see the after. Thank you, Kelly. She reminded me. <laughs> Gorgeous. Okay, if you guys, I'm in Southern California. I do makeup on different pieces and models every week. If you have a particular makeup technique or something that you would like to address on you, like Christine wanted to talk about this today, um, reach out to me and let me know. I would love to have you model for me. So we go live uh, four days a week, usually at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We would love to see you guys tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye.